Okay, hello everyone. Uh, video 57 is going to uh, demonstrate, hopefully, uh, how to use X-Ways Forensics to uh, look at SQLite databases, um, which is no new thing. Uh, we all know SQLite databases are everywhere uh, in all sorts of devices and applications, and there's a myriad of forensic tools that you can use to look at them. Um, uh, I'm only demonstrating this because a user has asked me to um, so I say a user, um, an X-Ways user and a reader of the blog has asked me to demonstrate using X-Ways Forensics to look at SQLite data. Um, the particular person who asked had got a lot of experience using Belkasoft tools um, and I think pretty much all the mainstream forensic tools will process SQLite um, uh, and there are some specialist tools that are geared uh, solely towards SQLite, for example Sand uh, Sanderson Forensics has got um, an SQLite uh, toolkit which is really powerful as well um, uh, but this video is obviously going to be centered around how you can look through bits and pieces of databases with Xcos Forensics. Uh, the data that we're using here was um, the links were given to me by the user and as far as I can gather they are uh, Belkasoft kind of test data so um, I think it's okay for me to to use those um, I'm sure if it's not Belkasoft will, will let me know. Um, okay, so uh, I've downloaded the EO1 image and I've also created my own virtual hard drive where I've copied a load of other SQLite data to it. Um, so I'm just going to open both of those for now and add them to x -Ways Forensics. I'm using Cutting Edge just released nine, version 19.4. It's not even a service release um, uh, version of it, so this has just come out. Um, so we've added the images and as you can see there's uh, stuff on here. Um, now I'm not going to look at all of them but I'm just going to centre probably on the Skype one. Uh, the Skype database is a common one, uh, the main.db file um, and, uh, and I'm going to try and hopefully show you some of the differences between just adding the image and, and going on to actually examine and, and try and recover um, some database files. So on this um, test image firstly I'm just going to quickly use the type filter um, and uh, just get rid of that um, database finance is where uh, the SQLite categories would be located um, somewhere down here yeah SQLite 2, 3, SQLite DB etc etc um, so I don't necessarily need the rest on in fact I'm not going to put the rest on um, I'm just going to tick these few. Uh, might as well just do that as well. Uh, so click activate, and if we right click and explosively uh, re explore recursively, here are some SQLite files uh, that are on here just by default. So I'm not refine the volume snapshot yet. This is just what Xways Forensics knows are there. In according to the file system of this particular year one image, and, and as you can see, as it stands at the moment, um, uh, you can't do a great deal with them. Um, you click on them, this is what you see, uh, and if you try and double click on them, nothing will happen. It's not like a registry database, for example, where you'll get a built in registry viewer launch straight away. Um, so one of the first things I'm going to do is kind of try and replicate a bit of what you would do with a, a real case. So I'm just taking the filters off and then I'm going to refine the volume snapshot uh, initially for this particular forensic image. Now in more recent versions of XOAs the RVS dialog has changed a lot. Um, it, traditionally it's been fairly thin and quite long and all the options have been up and down a bit like this column 2 here. Uh, obviously as things have been added X -way, um, Stefan, who develops X has had to change this a little bit. Um, uh, I'm not. I don't like the way that number three is down there. I think uh, I would maybe make this a bit wider and have number three over here. But anyway, that's a minor point. Um, right. So we would uh, particularly through a file system data search and file header signature search to find potentially deleted uh, bits and pieces. And then over here, uh, it tick that. It ticks all the last remembered ones that you did. So I'm going to do all of these things anyway. Um, 
and a couple of the important ones that uh, you need to be aware of uh, which if you if you don't tick could potentially cause you problems is, is this one um, the extract internal metadata browser history and events um, there's things in here extract tables from various other SQLite databases you need to make sure that's ticked um, to get the kind of full benefit of this um, and then in, in here this is a new uh, feature as well uh, about copying metadata out um, relating to various data sources I've just left them as the default ones uh, th that's the main thing I wanted to show you <coughs> um, and I think this one also has an effect uh, uh, but I could be wrong on that I'm not entirely sure anyway so we click OK uh, and I'm not going to do anything else uh, but I do need to choose the evidence object uh, this is relating to uh, excuse me for a moment this is new to oh, there we are in selected evidence objects uh, so I'm just gonna for now just go for that top one we click OK uh, and in, I think it's in internet uh, yeah SQLite is there uh, so and I always give a prefix of that so that I can easily find any uh, file that's been recovered in this way because it will always start with card file hyphen. So we click OK, it will quickly rattle off, find some bits and pieces. Sure, it did this quicker than when I tested it earlier. <laughs> I'll, maybe I'll just pause the video for a moment. Okay, so that's finished. Uh, we click OK to that. Uh, and so now, if we put that filter back on and explore for that, you'll see you get quite a lot more uh, of additional um, files that it's found. Um, but of consequence is the fact that a lot of these database files have now got numbers in brackets next to them which represents the fact that they've got child objects. Now this is key with uh, SQLite databases with next Forensics. forensics. Um, it basically takes that database file, explores it all, explores all the various tables, looks for any embedded information uh, like your kind of binary data and JPEGs and all of that and it pulls them all out as child objects of the parent file. What it also does <coughs> is create some virtual files which are human friendly representations of the data within that uh, SQLite database. So in the case of um, a Skype database for example you will get HTML child objects which are web based friendly representations of the data within that um, uh, database. So when you, do when you double click one of these files now like this one here it will say um, do you want to view it or explore it if you choose explore it then breaks the content down uh, for you to look through um, with a combination of tab separated data and HTML data um, now in the, if you click on some of these it doesn't necessarily look that pleasant but it is at least readable um, and you can tell that this is data from the contacts, data from the accounts, data from conversations, blah blah blah. And if you click on the uh, HTML one that you can see there, you'll see some information. And then if you click on some of the other ones like this one, which are chat sessions between these two users, um, you can see that it renders the data, uh, decodes the dates and times that are stored within the rows of the database. Um, and the actual content of the message which you can see down there um, and you can also obviously launch that in uh, uh, a web browser so this is it open within Firefox um, uh, so on and so forth uh, let me see if I can find anything else of interest in there uh, the places one, so this is uh, an SQLite database. I'm assuming from uh, the uh, a web browser. 
just let me change some options for a moment uh, so that we can see a little more clearly. I'll put path in there and move it up because I don't. I don't. Where's my path column gone? Options. Path. 60. So now if I extend that out, you can now see it is part of a Firefox profile. Uh, I mean, we would know that anyway by the name, but I just wanted to uh, show you how it would represent it. Um, and uh, again, if we, if we double click that and choose Explore, here's an example of a lot of the pictures that are found within the database. So it will show you, I mean, obviously in this case, they're not very interesting, but uh, they are there nonetheless um, and if we go back to this is the HTML representation uh, showing the places that have been visited so you can get all that again you can right click it choose associated program and you get the dates and all of that carry on uh, so visits to the BBC website and so on so that's good um, and quite a bit of that. I'm trying to remember what else I wanted to show you. Oh yeah, let me go back and find the other Skype one uh, in here. Now this volume snapshot hasn't been refined yet, um, but if I just show you as an example, uh, any thoughts on that? I don't think so. So here is a main.db file relating to Skype again before the volume snapshot has been taken. So there's the file. If we click preview, it will just show it like that. If I now refine the volume snapshot uh, for this one as well, uh, I wouldn't necessarily need to do all of this. Obviously the main one is that, but this is such a small amount of data, it shouldn't really matter. Um, so if I just click OK to that, it will examine all the various databases that it finds um, on this evidence object and now as you can see it instantly refreshes shows you a, like the summary page of this Skype database gives you the number of child objects that it has and then again if we if we double click it um, some of it is not necessarily uh, kind of user friendly looking data but again, you get your tab separated data, which you can just view in a notepad or a, a spreadsheet software, of course. Um, and then again, you get these HTML virtual files. Virtual files have been represented by the icon, remember. If you go into legend and go over here, you can look up what everything means. Um, and so virtual files are represented there by that icon there. Um, and if I scroll down, I think these ones here have got quite a lot in them. Yeah, here we are again, look. Uh, dates and times, users, and then the content of all the message there. Uh, and same theory again, I can launch that using a web browser. And you can obviously export that and send it to someone that may need to see it. Um, so that's a fairly quick whistleblow tour of reviewing SQLite data within Xbox Forensics. Um, obviously the key point is that you need to refine the volume snapshot in order to get it to delve into those and look at them and decode them uh, but once it's done you basically get this array of child objects for each SQLite database uh, and some of those child objects will be virtual files which are uh, either tab se separated or HTML versions uh, of that data and then you can review it to your heart's content okay that's it okay thanks very much